squeamish? <laughs> little squeamish. That's right, it's time for the mail sack! Mail sack, mail sack, why is there hair in this mail sack? Mail sack, mail sack, let's all go inside. Mail sack, mail sack, why is there hair in this mail sack? Mail sack, mail sack, it's all We have a, a special um, submission. Uh, this comes from uh, from Zork off of uh, wrestling.insidepulse.com. Zork is a very frequent commenter on Inside Pulse, and uh, he gave us quite a bit to work with. I had to, you know, kind of shave it down uh, and cut out some stuff. Uh, not because it wasn't good or anything, but, you know, just had to trim it some. Aye. Uh, so, basically... Uh, He was talking about how we were addressing Sandow and how it would be interesting if Sandow cashed in on the vacant title and get involved in Corporation 2.0. He said it would make him look more serious, which is something he kind of lacks to be main event material. They could start playing up a thing like he's a student of the game and Triple H is taking him under his wing or whatever. And I'll stop right there just for right now. And I really have to agree with that statement. And it makes a lot of sense considering, you know... Triple H and Sandow, they're both Killer Kowalski guys, mm-hmm. on, you know, right off the bat. And then, too, we we have that story coming out after Raw 1000 last year where, you know, all the DX guys were really big on Damien after he was willing to, you know, pretty much get buried by all er, every member of DX. Yeah. So, there's always, uh, there's already, you know, history there. Uh, but going on with Zork's comment, he says, uh, he asked, uh, do you guys think that WWE keeps these debut holding patterns up for far too long? Um, the first time I really noticed it was with Brodus Clay's re-debut. Sure, it made him look strong, I guess, with him squashing people for a month straight, but after that, it starts to get old. Uh, you want to start seeing him do something else, struggle a little, just something. Um, yeah, you know, we're referring, you know, to Brodus Clay's, his re-debut, Kind of did the same thing for a while. We're seeing it now with the Wyatts. Kind of doing the same thing after a while. Yeah. Um, Fandango, we're not sure what was up with that. Um, um, and yeah, Sand- I mean, Sandow seems like he's in a weird, like, he's always been in this weird holding pattern. Yeah, and it's, it's something we, you know, we mentioned it even earlier on this podcast yeah. with, with Ryback, how it kind of wasn't, you know, went stale. Mm-hmm. Me, personally... I've never been a huge fan of the video packages before the debut yes. of a guy, especially like the several weeks out ones. Yeah. Um, when you know, he's coming, he's coming. Da, 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 da. Um, if they were to do something interesting with that, it would have me more invested in the guy. And honestly, the Wyatts did have something more interesting with their previous video, video packages. Mm-hmm. Um, but but we ended up with the same kind of yeah I mean but you know yeah. you go through you have this generic like he's super monster angry man which Ryback had and honestly which Brodus Clay had even though he didn't come out as super monster angry man right um but he's still like completely he's, demolished he's, in the ring yeah he's cheerful happy super monster angry man right um let's see the right way to to be de- de- the right way to debut these guys mm-hmm. um and. Yeah, I get the how long should you keep it because you do want if you are more trying to back a guy, right. you want him to come I out. I would say, I would win say his first match, blah blah blah. How I would say um, that that pattern of just coming out and squashing jobbers, I'd say do that for a good month. Really, four stuff. episodes, four yeah, essentially four episodes, either on SmackDown or Raw, or or sometimes a few weeks, maybe do both. I don't know, and then after that. Go ahead and put him in some sort of feud with somebody. Yeah. You know, leading up to a pay-per-view or something. Um, instead, what they did, like, especially with Ryback, they just had him do the same thing over and over and over. And then they kind of lucked out with him, you know, getting involved with the whole punk thing. But that's, the, like, that was the feud that kind of elevated him. Yeah. Know? Um. So, basically, they just need to try their hand at putting them in a feud... With a with someone who's not a jobber, maybe mid card, someone that's actually going to make them struggle, so we can see what they look like in a full match. Mm-hmm. That's something we 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 it took forever for us to see that with with uh, Ryback. Yeah, um, it took us forever to see that with Brodus. Um, I we still don't really have that with Bray Wyatt. Right. 
Uh, uh, especially Bray Wyatt because he hardly ever wrestles. He, like, he's really he, only had... He's had the one uh, Ring of Fire match. Yeah, the Ring of Fire match, and I think he had one match on Raw, and that was it. Yeah. Um. Honestly, the best debut, and I'm, I'm specifically kind of thinking about the Big Angry Monster Man kind of thing, because yeah. they like that so much, mm-hmm. and their go-to thing is the crush, 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 until they take it too far. Yeah. The best one I can think of, honestly, was Karma. Karma came out. Karma was imposing. Well, yeah, it was, yeah. Karma. That was, wasn't even a match. She just came out and She came and out, left. yeah, but she was very much, she pointed, you know, her hand at, this is, you know, I think it was at the Bells and it was, I'm coming after you. Yeah. You are my goal right here, right now. And there is this advantage of there's just not as many divas to right. go around. So you put in... <laughs> There's a lot of a quicker line to go through. Well, you put in one new diva, and that can potentially really shake everything up. Yeah. You know, there's only so many times you can crush at least Fox, basically. Yeah. Um, But yeah, kind of put them in somewhere where they want something. They're, they're there because of reasons. Yeah. Um. And too many people's reasons are, I'm here to be a WWE superstar. Yeah. Which is swell and dandy, but... You need to... Y- you, you need you've made it. Like, yeah. as soon as you have entrance music, you've made that goal. Oh, poor Brad Maddox. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have entrance music. That's true. <laughs> um, and basically, I kind of view this as the, the Vladimir Kozlov box. Okay? When Kozlov first debuted way back when on SmackDown, I think... He would just truck through everyone. Mm -hmm. And he went through this big, 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 like, winning streak. Oddly enough, didn't get Goldberg chance. Who knew that was possible? Mm -hmm. Um, And basically kind of put them all in the box where it was like, okay, well, I guess we have to give him a title shot now against Triple H. And it was a very boring feud. There was no story, and there was a boring match. And after that, they pretty much did nothing with Kozlov afterwards. Cause they're like, oh yeah, we beat, he's he's beaten now. So that was pretty much all we built around him is that he wins matches. So yeah, that's the thing is is unbeatable is a character trait that only works until they're beaten. Yeah, and then what? Yeah, and then you don't have anything if you build too much on that unbeatable aspect mm. of them. Um, my so a hypothetical character comes out. Um, and give them, you know, the week before they debut, introduce them, kind of thing. Next week we'll do this guy. Um, give them a sit-down interview with Jr. or Michael Cole, I guess now since Jr. is retired, um, and have and just straight up ask them the question: What are your goals in the WWE? Mm. And give them, you know, a uh, Miz wouldn't sign an autograph for me, and it fueled my rage. I mean, this is a bad storyline, obviously. No kidding. <laughs> but it, it instantly puts them in a feud, feud with, with Miz. Yeah. Miz is not, you know, the bottom of the barrel. I mean, or, you know, I, my grandfather um, once told me of the glories of the Intercontinental Championship, and it's been my dream. You're automatically sticking them in the mid card, mm. in the title scene. Not disturbing, you know, the main event. But he still he still has a purpose. He has a goal. Mm. He's there to achieve something. Yeah, and like yeah, like it's like I was saying. I would I would be willing to give any newcomer like a good month time frame of just going out there and having a match. Not really for any reason. But then after that, you have to do something. Like you said, maybe do an interview, point out something very specific, and have a very specific point from that point forward yeah to really build and you know have your have yourself be familiarized with with the public but i okay in that case like i really post to you is beating you know zach Ryder, who's kind of fallen back into that jobber Mm. territory um is beating zach Ryder better than beating nobody do you honestly have more Investment or faith in a wrestler who's one and zero against Zack Ryder versus one who's zero and zero. I mean, a Does little, it, a little bit. Like it, it establishes one that they're some sort of an opposing threat and they're worth the time of someone who's higher up. You know, because then he just shows up, be like, okay, well, who's this guy? You know, 
Yeah, I mean, maybe I just I you gotta I, have some. I think you have, some, have to have some sort of some sort of established presence before you you move up. I don't honestly. I don't. See I mean, it. it doesn't have to be much, especially you know if you're going up against someone like the Miz. Yeah, but see, I I think that a honest feud, and not even a feud, like a debut match. The guy debuts. He goes against Miz or R Truth or Kofi or you know anybody at that thing. And then even if he loses, even if he loses his debut match, if he has a good 15, 20 minutes, shows us, the audience, what he can do in the ring, I am more invested in him than he comes out and squashes 3 and big. Mm-hmm. I think I'm just, I'm automatically more invested in that guy. And if you are building Super Big Angry Strongman style of character, and why is it so bad that he squashes Kofi immediately? 